going to make a guitar rack. Uh, you know, in fact, it's actually more like a guitar hanger. This is a fun project. It doesn't take a lot of time and it doesn't take a lot of material. And this might be one of those projects that if you're trying to figure out what you can make somebody for Christmas, this might be the project. So let's get started. I thought it'd be interesting to just show the evolution of design. This was the first idea where I drilled a quarter inch hole to cradle the guitar neck. And then I moved on to this piece with uh, a less severe cut. And then this was the third attempt. And then from there I arrived at this. And this is just about done. The only change that I'm going to make is to extend the back here by half of an inch so this round over cut is a little less severe. The guitar hanger is made up of three parts. You have the two arms and the back. And the first part, the back, on the model measures nine inches and I want to add a half of an inch to that. So I'm going to cut this piece of babinga at nine and a half long by three and five eighths wide. Now that the back is cut to length and width, I need to mark out where I'm going to dado the back for the arms that will hold the guitar. And to find the depth of the dado, I'll use the material that I'm using for the arms, flush with the back, and trace a line. And this will be the area that I want to remove on both sides using the table saw. I've put a piece of painter's tape on my crosscut sled. That way I can simply just remove the tape and the marks won't be there. Now, what I like to do is put a mark where my first cut is going to be and then where the second cut will be and then just plow out the rest of the material. Now, the nice thing about putting a mark on the sled is for your other side, you simply flip the board over and align the board up with the marks and you're ready to make your next cut. And I'll find the height of the blade by using the piece of material that I'm using for the arms and just raise the blade until it's just about there. I like to cut the dados first and that way I can rip the part that I'm using for the arms to the exact width. I ripped the board at 2 and a 16th and it's still just a little bit heavy and that's kind of what's nice about creeping up on this measurement. That way you can get a really nice tight fit. And now that's really nice and snug. The next step is to cross cut the board for the arms. These are four inches long. Well now I'm at this point and I'm going to remove the arms. They're really pretty tight. And I want to drill the holes for mounting the guitar hanger and I'm going to, I've already drawn a line in the center and I'm going to mark a line at two and a half and what does that look like? Five and a half. I removed the arms from the model so I can use it as a pattern to trace a line for my next cut on the bandsaw. Now I'm moving on to the arms and the first step is to create a cradle in the top of the arm and on both arms and what that does is it cradles the guitar neck and keeps it from spinning or even falling off the, the front of the guitar hanger. 
I'll make a few reference lines on the arms and then I'm going to make this cradle using the drum part of the belt sander. And now what I want to try to do is make sure the belt sander doesn't go beyond these reference lines. I like to put the arms together as I'm shaping them on the sander and then just take a little bit off each side until I have a perfect, uh, where they touch or they bisect in the same spot and that way the guitar should hang straight. Now I'm going to take one of the arms of the model and put it on the arm that I still need to cut and trace a line. I finished shaping the arms and what I like to do when I'm making a pair of things is I'll get one uh, finished or to where I like it and then I'll just keep working on the second one until they match and in this case they're pretty good it's pretty nice and flush and the next step is to pre-drill and countersink holes in the backs of the arms so I can attach them to the back. I'll use the same drill bit to pre-drill a hole in the back. It's also a good idea to widen the pre-drilled hole in the back. And that will keep the screw from binding against the wood in the back of the guitar hanger as you attach it to the wall. I put the guitar rack together with a screw in each arm and everything looks good so now I'm going to take it apart give all the parts a good sanding, and then reassemble it, adding a little wood glue in the joint. Well, the data was a little bit deeper, so the arm is inset about maybe a 32nd or a six, uh, maybe a, a 64th of an inch. But this would still be pretty hard to sand down, so I'm just going to shave this off using the table saw. I use the drill press to make a few rosewood plugs and I'll glue them in to hide the screws with 5 minute epoxy. Well, I've got a few thin coats of lacquer on the guitar hanger, and I'm going to put it on the wall of my studio for a while just to see how it works. Now you can see that I don't have a stud where I'm trying to attach the guitar hanger, and I'll show you uh, what I like to do. So right now, the guitar hanger is just hanging by this one screw just in sheetrock. And so I like to put the top screw in first, and then level it, and then put the bottom screw in. Right now, the guitar hanger is essentially just in the sheetrock, and if you were to put a guitar on here, it would probably fall right off the wall. But why I did that was to get a marking for my mollies. Now I'm going to remove the guitar rack,
and I have the two marks where I want to put the mollies into the wall. These are the mollies that I'll use. I'm not exactly sure what they're called, but they're just the kind with this big spiral thread. And now I'll line the molly up with the holes. And now hopefully they are in the exact right spot. The neck on my steel string guitar is just about an inch and three quarters. My classical guitar, the one with the nylon strings, has a little bit wider of a neck. So that's why I made the opening here just about two and an eighth. It's really a little bit shy of two and an eighth, maybe two and a sixteenth between the two arms here. All right, well that didn't take too long and it was a really fun project. I always like to make things that I uh, can have a sculptural element, yet they're still functional. I hope you have a great holiday. I'll see you next year.